This is Twit. Let's go to some headlines. And boy, do we have some some juicy ones this week. It's been, I was a, it's say, been a week, huh? <laughs> Got to say stinkers, but it's not the headline's <laughs> fault. So, um, hey, California's lost, Texas's gain. Elon Musk, our good buddy, has decided he's had enough of the Golden State and wants to go to what's Texas's nickname? The White Star Lone Star, the Lone, Lone Star, Star State. State. That's right. And so, uh, you know, fits his politics, fits his sensibilities for taxes and everything else. So I guess that makes sense. Now, what I'm hearing out here, uh, and these are opinions, I don't know how informed they are, is that either Hawthorne, which is where their headquarters has been for 20 years, may not pick up en masse and go, but it may be the executives, but that the manufacturing will stay here. But well, we should we should I say like exactly what like what's going on though before we get into like how yeah, it's okay. gonna happen, right? I mean basically jump in. Yeah. yeah, basically Elon Musk uh is very upset apparently at uh, a new um uh, I think it's a it's an LGBTQ plus law in California that relates to, I think it's uh, trans gender changes mm. for kids, if, as I understand it. Um, oh, that the, and, the uh, I, I know what you're talking about. Gavin Newsom just passed it. It's that schools don't have to tell their parents exactly about that, right? Ex- exactly that 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 schools don't have to inform the parents if the child wants to change their name or pronouns at school, and then and request privacy like it's and it's the first law in the u.s to do that um and uh elon has been i think i guess uh, i guess he opposes um like those kinds of 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 rights for uh for for kids now he does have a trans (laughs) daughter or anybody else yeah Yeah. uh he does he does have a, a trans daughter um uh as well so there's like some personal history there that i'm sure is it but he's pretty upset about that law and he said uh, on on Twitter, I guess X, pardon me. He said that um, uh, uh, that the governor of California just signed this bill, causing what he calls massive destruction of parental rights and putting children at risk for permanent damage. And then because of that, he is going to move SpaceX's headquarters to um, Texas. He's done something similar too when uh, California really cracked down during the pandemic about. Uh, you know, like worker safety about yeah. worker safety and stuff. Uh, he did move tes- uh, Tesla's headquarters, I believe, to Texas as well. So, uh, so the big question that we were, we were talking about earlier now is that so he he said this. It um, uh, there was a press conference uh, later in the week that SpaceX was part of because they you know they have this contract to deorbit the space station, and in that one they said they haven't really been talking about moving the company to Texas because obviously it's brand brand new um and so it's unclear like what a move like that would work look like what uh, how how fast they could do it uh is it just the main offices which is what i think it would be uh or or is it like the factory writ large like you were just talking about in hawthorne now they were in what imperial city or just in in los angeles proper for a while before they moved to hawthorne um to get the bigger was the the first spot they hawthorne was the first Imperial big City factory they, they, they yeah that? when they were still flying falcon one mm-hmm. i think they had a different factory oh okay. um, i remember when they that. opened hawthorne uh a, a while ago but but that's a substantial a substantial investment if they're going to move the entire factory yeah to, uh, uh to, to texas a big loss like you were saying there um in terms of like the manufacturing uh jobs and whatnot i mean they they crank out rockets and rocket stages uh like there's no tomorrow out of there they launch like what well they used to launch what multiple times a week uh now they're grounded until they can get figure out this value yeah, two uh, issue that we were talking about so talking, so it's just talking nine it, it's like the latest uh uh i don't know i would call it like grenade in the the pond that 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 elon has tossed uh to shake things up and we're gonna have to see how it uh how it settles over time like what they're actually going to do about it if you if you go to the headquarters, maybe I don't know a fifth or a sixth of the building, at least as as I remember it, pacing. Yeah, it you've off, been there. You've been there. Yeah, was executive offices, maybe as much as a quarter, but I think less, more like a fifth. And the rest is manufacturing, and it's a big place, you know, and and yeah. it's, heavy, it's heavy manufacturing. This is like the entirety of the Falcon Nine. I have only seen it and the Dragon One Ten so Freeway. Forth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that would be a big do, but I guess they could just move the executives out, but we see how well that worked out for Boeing. So well, well, I guess we'll see. And you, you touched on this. Let's talk about that second stage fit stage failure 
of the Falcon 9 and what that means for SpaceX and for launching rockets because they oh, that's right. most of it. Yeah, that was pretty fresh last week, right? When um, uh, when when we when we met, I think it had just barely happened. Yeah. So, yeah, the there there is an FAA investigation underway now. Uh, when SpaceX launched their most recent Starship launch out of uh, Vandenberg, I think it was. But Falcon uh, Nine. The Falcon Nine. Yeah. What did yeah. I say? Did I say something Starship. else? Starship. You said, <laughs> you said that other rocket. <laughs> yeah, that other rocket. No. Yes, Falcon Nine. When they when they launched their their latest Falcon Nine, the upper stage. Um, uh, failed during like a relight and uh, they had a leak. It's still unclear to me if if it actually exploded or not because Elon, in another one of his tweets last week, he said that it had an RUD, their rapid unscheduled disassembly. But really? in a subsequent post on uh, Friday, as you and I were talking in our last episode, uh, SpaceX put out a statement where they said that the upper stage, in fact, did survive. It did deploy the satellites just in a, a much lower altitude than they were supposed to be. And SpaceX did try valiantly to save those 20 plus satellites right. or so uh but they did uh they were all confirmed jonathan mcdowell uh the satellite tracker confirmed that they've all re-entered now they burned up and they're gone uh and so that's a big loss uh, that they're gonna have to eat uh while they do this investigation so, so SpaceX, excuse me but the uh the starlinks use ion thrusters right yeah for, yeah for raising and, and lowering their orbits which yeah, can't, space, can't compete with the atmosphere exactly and they they said that they they put them at the equivalent of warp nine to desperately try to get them higher, but they were so much lower than where they they needed to be. Um, mm. And this is you know th this is because they they actually want to deploy them at a higher uh, altitude, and then they have a maneuver that they all do quickly after. Uh, in the wake of another batch of Starlink satellites that SpaceX lost uh, a year or two ago uh, during a solar storm, so uh, so all of those things um, they weren't able to 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 save these ones uh, anyway. So uh, in in the days since you and I last talked a little bit about this, uh, uh, SpaceX is working with the FAA to try to understand what what happened. The Polaris Dawn launch of Jared right. Isaacman and his private crew, which was scheduled for July 31, is expected to be delayed. There's nothing public about it yet, uh, but we're expecting them to, to push that one back. NASA said it's going to do its own review, too, based on the results of the uh, SpaceX and FAA investigation to make sure that they can accept that the Falcon 9 upper stage is safe and ready uh, for uh, Crew 9, which was supposed to launch in mid-August. In fact, NASA put out the media accreditation just the other call. day yeah yeah just, just recently uh with not without even knowing if they're going to be able to launch or when meanwhile spacex has actually applied the, with the faa or at least asked that uh if they, they'd be allowed to expedite a resumption of flights based on like what the early findings are going to be for this like if they think that it's not an issue for other starlink launches you could see them doing that and then moving up to customer flights and then to crude flights depending on what the stages are. It's still unclear how that's all going to shake out, but this is a very rare, rare failure. Well, uh, two out of failure. 310? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they something? they had one failure on the pad during during like tests, right? That was that that pad explosion. That was 2015, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh and then they had the the in-flight uh cargo launch for NASA failure. Uh, and those are the two. Those are the, the the two primary ones. They did have a crew dragon explosion during some testing on the ground, but that right. was uh, like really specifically around the crew Draco test, uh, Draco things uh, that they would have. And these satellites yeah, engines, launches yeah. don't have that kind of thing yet. So, um, so it's interesting, you know, because it, it's been a while. There was in 2015, 2014, a spate of failures. Uh, with not just SpaceX, but SpaceX was one of them. But you also had um, the uh, the Antares. Uh, vehicle failure. You had, yeah. I think, a, 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 a progress or a couple of progress uh, failures, and uh, and they were all like kind of in a row. These 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 flights to the space station, these cargo flights, uh, which which caused some 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 ripples down the line. But SpaceX has been on a tear. They wanted to launch like something like 110 rockets this year. Uh, they were 60 plus, I believe, at at the point of yeah. um, of this of this one here. Uh, and so this this drought is is going to affect their 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 launch targets uh, for the year, depending on how fast they can get it turned around. So. Well, we wish them luck because they're they're not the only game in town, but yeah. sometimes it feels like it. And it's yeah. worth pointing out, you know, for just in case anybody, I, I think most of our audience knows this, but uh, I heard somebody saying, oh, I was on a radio 
a radio segment I was doing. They said, well, but they use these rockets over and over again, right? And I said, yeah, but not the second stage. This not is all the brand new stage. hardware. It's always brand new, yeah. And they yeah. had a fuel leak. It was a very visible fuel leak. Right. On, uh, on, on the stage, on you can see a lot of yeah. ice and everything uh, uh, there. And um, and they traced the failure to that a period during a relight where they do like a one-second fire of the thruster to normalize the uh, the uh, uh, the orbit there for deploy. Well, let's send them a nice get well soon card. Um, <laughs> and we have another Starship. Speaking of SpaceX still, we have another Starship test coming up. Now, that shouldn't be delayed by this, correct? No, well, not not, not that by I this. Would think well not by the you know the the starship is fundamentally like a much different vehicle you know it has like the super heavy booster it has the starship upper stage uh which is very different starship has what six uh raptor engines as mm -hmm. opposed to the, the the one uh uh merlin upper stage or whatever it is that the right. uh, the vacuum one that the 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 falcon 9 rockets have uh, so it seems like there there isn't a lot of cross pollination there however you know if, if there is some kind of commonality because the raptor engines are evolutions of the merlin engines if there's any kind of commonalities they're going to want to uh, x all of that out before they they try this however but they've been steadily testing the starship uh, super heavy booster uh, at their 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 starbase pads uh and they you know they it seems like spacex is serious when they say they're going to try to catch the um uh, the Boy. booster on the way down. That Talk sounds about really, your luck, huh? That seems really, really sporty. I thought they would at least build a second, yeah, oh, that, a second yeah. pad uh, before they uh, before oh, they yeah. tried it. But uh, uh, but they they seem like they're they're really uh, pushing it and, and and gearing up for it. Like within a a few weeks. So I mean, I, I had expected uh, them to try it, you know, before the end of July. Although there's not a lot of room left this month um, uh, for it. So perhaps by by August we'll see this actual uh, uh, launch and and capture test and that'll be that'll be exciting and maybe that'll be like the big launch you know private launch of the summer instead of Polaris Dawn while they're waiting for the uh, uh, the Falcon Nine investigation to complete. So so far every uh, booster stage has exploded. No, uh, the Didn't the the one that came down the ocean also uh, explode in the well, last moments. No, I don't believe so. I think it it it, it hit the ocean, and if yeah. it exploded, it was because it hit the ocean. Okay, okay. Um, so, but but, it, but if you bang into a launch pad, and you still got some fuel in those uh, in the tanks above the descent engines, I wonder what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I think that I think SpaceX wants to find out too. But if if you <laughs> watch, if you see the video from the booster that they shared after uh, after mm -hmm. the the flight four launch, uh, it actually like splashes down and then tips over and then the video goes out. So it it like falls down. So they 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 made their quote unquote soft landing in the Gulf of uh, of um, uh, of Mexico. So so that was pretty exciting to see. And we'll see. Well, I mean, all right. But but that's a very different than hovering right next to a giant metal structure right. that is like trying to uh, grab you by your little wings, you know, your little, uh, what are those, those titanium veins that they use at the top. The grid uh, that's how it's, yeah. That's how, yeah, that's how it's supposed to catch them. So what is that? That's like a, how many tons is it? It's like double digit tons. Many. Um, yeah, that they're gonna, they're on those little hinges there, so. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app, or see the link in the description below. See you there.